Hello YouTube, this is Detroit Borg. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Cyber Acoustics digital docking speaker for the iPod. This is the CA461 model, and you've seen me review the CA492 in a previous video. If you want to see that, there's a link in the description below. Now this is a little cheaper than the 492. It retails for $55, but you can purchase this on Amazon for about $32. Now this is compatible with most iPods and some dock adapters have been included. Like all iPod docks, this dock uses the 30 pin connector. However, if you have an MP3 player or an iPod that doesn't have a 30 pin dock like an iPod shuffle, you can use the auxiliary input. Now the back has some important bullet points about this product. It does fit all iPods and does include some universal dock adapters. It will charge an iPod if it's plugged into an AC source. It will also charge an iPhone if it's plugged into an AC source. It does have a carrying pouch, an AC adapter. You also have the option to install four AA batteries to use this as a portable dock. Now let's go ahead and unbox it. So you can see the power supply. Looks like we have a dock adapter, so this is the iPod Shuffle 2nd Gen, iPod Nano 3rd Gen, iPod Touch, so that must be the 1st Gen, iPod Nano 2nd Gen, iPod Nano 4th Gen, and 60 gig iPod with video and 160 gig iPod Classic, so it looks like it fits all of those classic models. Looks like on the side we have some documentation. On the inside we have an auxiliary cable, the carrying pouch, and the speaker dock itself. Now taking a look around the dock itself we can see there is a nice metal grate over the speakers themselves. These are two inch drivers for a total of six available watts of power. On the back we have the battery cover. We can see it accepts four double A's. We also have the auxiliary input, the DC input, and the power on and off switch. Up here we have a little grab handle. Now on the top we have the power button and the volume up and down button. Now on the bottom we do have some rubber feet to hold on to the table so it doesn't slide around. The dock actually shipped with one of the dock adapters already installed and this is for the uh, 30 gig and 80 gig uh, iPod video. So this is, would be the 5th gen iPod Classic. Now these dock adapters are a little different. They do have these little handles or backrests on them which make them easier to remove and uh, the iPods actually rest against this. So that's kind of a nice detail. Now I've plugged it in and all I have to do is switch it on. Now on the front I can see I have a little LED indicator Let me know this is powered. So let's go ahead and insert one of the iPod classics. Let's do the 6th gen. And I have Coldplay already loaded so let's just click play. Now you cannot increase the volume on the iPod itself, instead you do it on the dock. Overall the sound isn't great, it's pretty loud, it will definitely fill a large room, but the quality is uh, probably below the 492, it's, this is quite a bit more muffled, and it's not as clear, and when you increase the volume up pretty loudly, it does sort of crack and pop, so let's go ahead and listen to that. So if I go all the way up. So you want to keep it at a reasonable level and it sounds pretty good. Now let's try the 6th Gen Nano. So again, you control the volume on the dock itself and control the music on the iPod. Here we have the iPod Touch dock adapter. You can see it says Touch. I suspect this is actually for the first gen iPod Touch. Let's see if it works with the latest generation. So this is the fourth gen. And indeed it does seem to fit. And of course I do have Coldplay loaded already. And you can see it's actually charging the iPod. Let's go to Parachutes and first song. There you go. Of course, with the iPod Touch, you have a nice touch screen to control your music with. Of course, you can also load Pandora. In fact, you can even hear the um, typing of the iPod through the speaker. So 
So there we go, and it does say no volume available. That's because the speaker dock is taking over that function. Now this model isn't designed to work with the iPhone, but some aspects should work. So let's go ahead and try it out anyway. I have an iPhone 4 here. In fact, I can actually hear some interference from the GSM antenna on the iPhone. It, it's coming through the speaker, so that may be a problem. But again, it says this accessory is not optimized for the iPhone, so some features may not work. Let's go ahead and dismiss that, and let's let's just try the iPod. I'm going to do one of my podcasts. So let's go to Leo Laporte. Let's go to the latest one from people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Tech Guy is provided by. So I'm going to try calling my iPhone 4. Some of the docks that don't support the iPhone will prevent the iPhone speaker from working. So let me uh, try using the FaceTime app to see what happens. So you can actually hear the ring on the speaker itself. Now if you turn the speaker dock off, the speakers turn off and the light goes to standby. And so if you call the iPhone when it's docked, it's still charging and the call comes through the iPhone's internal speakers. So let's go ahead and do that. So there we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and connect the auxiliary cable so we can connect an iPod shuffle. So we're gonna press the power button. So, so again, you control the playback on the iPod shuffle, but the difference with using an auxiliary cable, you can actually control the volume directly from the shuffle itself. Click play. You can also increase volume on the dock itself, but you probably don't want to do that because it's boosting the volume that's coming out of here. So if you have the volume low on here, but the volume high on here, it's going to be distorted. The speaker dock also comes with a carrying bag. Just draw the drawstring and there you go. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with this speaker dock, especially at $32. Now at $55, it may be a little steep. This is great for iPods or MP3 players. Again, it's nice and portable, uh, but it's not great for iPhones. The iPhone causes too much interference in the speakers and you're constantly going to be hearing the GSM interference through your speakers and that's going to be annoying. Uh, you may want to get the CA492 instead. It's properly uh, designed for uh, iPhones. So once again, guys, this is Detroit Borg with a review of the Cyber Acoustics digital docking speaker for the iPod. Thanks for watching.